Hey everybody, uh, week number three of my new Cowboys blog here. This is Justin. Um, as always, if you want to be checking out any of my previous entries, you know, just click on my playlist there for my Cowboys vlogs. Uh, so, not a whole lot of Cowboys news really going on this week. They got the owners meetings in Florida going on right now. Um, so the only real news is just some interviews with Stephen and Jerry Jones and not really a whole lot of stuff coming out of there right now, at least not that's a whole lot of really newsworthy stuff. Um, so not really going to focus too much on that this week. Um, for this week, I've kind of started looking at some guys in the draft um, that maybe I've seen connected to the Cowboys in some way, just from mock drafts or any of that kind of stuff for just some guys that I've taken a look at. Uh, I'm not doing a ton of guys, I'm just going to kind of pick, go position by position for guys, or at least positions that I think we might have an interest in, um, or I think it might be logical for us to draft, and then kind of highlight maybe one or two guys in that position, just kind of make note of what I saw looking at their tape, and by tape I mean on websites looking at YouTube videos and that kind of stuff, I don't have the all 22 even though I wish I did. Uh, so for this week, we're starting with offense. Uh, so I did a quarterback and I did a couple of wide receivers. I don't think running backs very much of a legitimate option for us in the draft so much, except for maybe later on. So as I get towards the end of doing all this, I might try and look at some later round running backs, maybe see what's going on there. Um, and tight ends, I really don't think we should be looking at. Obviously, every Cowboys fan knows we just keep going after more and more tight ends. Uh, so I haven't didn't really focus at all on tight ends, and I don't really plan to look at that. So I did uh, took a look at Aaron Murray, the quarterback out of Georgia, and then the two wide receivers. I took a look at uh, Jordan Matthews out of Vanderbilt and uh, Devontae Adams from Fresno State. Um, Again, I'm not just looking at like the top guys at each position, so I didn't look at a guy like Manziel or Blake Bortles or receivers like Sammy Watkins, who probably aren't going to be there when we pick. And I tried to go a little bit somewhat more realistic to what the Cowboys might do in terms of what range these guys might be in. Um, so we'll start with Aaron Murray. So I took a look, and if you want to look at this kind of tape yourself, um, I go to a site, draftbreakdown.com and they've got lists of all the draft eligible guys and they've got videos of each of their uh, for each of the guys um, some guys have more videos some guys have less and usually what it is is just kind of a collaboration of tape from individual games uh, so I looked at a couple of games for each guy so for Aaron Murray I looked at his tape versus South Carolina and versus Auburn from this last year uh, now everybody knows he was hurt so he hurt his knee during the season um, and in my opinion, especially after looking at his film, his draft stock is really going to depend on how healthy his knee is. Um, I know his pro day, I think, is coming up here um, not too long from now, and I think that's going to really be a key for him. Um, I'm no expert on draft or draft stock or anything like that. Uh, like I mentioned in my first video, I just haven't taken a draft, kind of a scouting class to kind of see what to look for. Um, so, you know, you can take my opinion with a grain of salt. But I think he could go anywhere from probably the second round to anywhere down to like the fourth or fifth, depending on the health of his knee. Uh, if he shows healthy, um, based on what I've seen, I think he'll probably end up in the second and would probably be well out of the Cowboys' range because I don't think we're going to be looking at a quarterback um, at all in the draft unless somebody who's pretty highly rated drops to like maybe the fourth would be my guess. Um, but anyway, just to kind of go over what I saw when I looked at these games, uh, just a, just made a couple of notes on each game of what I what I noticed. Um, versus South Carolina, you know, because I've never actually really paid a whole lot of attention to watching him specifically, and I noticed that he he's very good at very making the quick read and the quick throw, particularly on a quick slant, um, and he's very he's extremely accurate when he does those. He's always been able to fit him into a very tight window in between defenders. Um, and I also noticed, especially in that game, his stats probably might have been a little bit skewed because I saw a lot of drops uh, by his wide receivers. 
Um, one thing that kind of surprised me a little bit, probably again because I don't, I haven't watched him specifically as much. He was very good on on the run in terms of rollouts, both right and left. I was kind of, it didn't surprise me as much with his accuracy rolling right, but I was surprised at how accurate he was making throws rolling left. And he made a couple of deep throws rolling left that were very accurate, which is very impressive. Um, he made some good decision making in that game, very calm under pressure, um, especially with South Carolina, because you know, he had Jadavian Clowney kind of coming after him on a lot of plays. And he was, he was able to stay pretty steady and evade pressure almost every time. Um, but he didn't make bad decisions or make too many hurried throws there under pressure. Um, his play action fakes were really well done. Um, whether or not you consider that to be a noteworthy stat for a quarterback would kind of be up to your own discretion, but he, he does have a very convincing play action fake. And he was able to show some pretty good arm strength, and he was able to make a lot of the different throws, both short, intermediate, and long. I noticed, um, and I'll mention this a little bit more as I go through the game against Auburn, that they do run a lot of wide receiver, or quick throws like wide receiver screens also. So it kind of doesn't give him all the chance to show off his arm. A lot of times when he was showing off deep arm strength, it was kind of end of game or end of half situations. Um, but he definitely has the strength to get it there. And he can put a lot of zip on the ball uh, when he's doing some deep crosses and deep ends. And again, he's very, he's able to be very accurate, especially when he can step into the throws. So I was really impressed with his tape against South Carolina. Um, against Auburn, in this game, he was very susceptible to pressure. And his tackles, I felt, really let him down in this game because he basically started a three to five step drop. By the time he got to the drop, half the time he had a guy in his face. Um, so in this game, it didn't seem like they were choosing to diagnose a lot of quick throws. This one, it seemed like he was forced to make a lot of quick throws, and his accuracy got a little bit off on some of those quick throws in this game because he had to throw so fast, um, and it cost some bad throws. Um, he did have an interception in the game because he sailed the ball, not being able to step into his throw again because of pressure in his face. Um, when he did have time, he was able to, again, just like the South Carolina game, get off some really accurate passes and show some really good zip and arm strength. Um, I felt like his awareness in the pocket was a little bit shaky in this game. Um, sometimes he'd have guys coming at him from his front side that he wouldn't seem to notice were there, and it caused him to get in trouble and fumble, his, fumble the ball on the sack. Um, so I, mean, I felt that that, and, and that happened fairly early in the game, and I felt that kind of got into his head a little bit. That kind of caused him to make some quicker decisions and rush into some things. Um, as the game got going, though, they kind of went back to their little bit of a game plan of some quick slants. And again, he was able to, you know, basically get the snap, take one step, and just drive the ball on the slant. He was able to get it right on the guy's numbers and do a really good job doing it that way. Um, other thing I noticed in this game, they did a lot more... Um, intermediate to deep crosses, and it really showed his accuracy on those patterns. He was able to fit it in between defenders and, again, hit the guy right on the numbers in the chest. It was very impressive. Um, this game also showed off kind of how shifty he can be as a scrambler. Uh, he ran for a couple of touchdowns in this one and was actually a little bit, a lot more athletic than I had initially given him credit for. Again, that could be based on the fact that I didn't watch many of his tapes. Um, but, yeah, like I say, he showed some good uh, good athleticism on his runs. A lot of toughness on his runs, too. He was taking some hits and kind of trying to bowl people over. I'm um, not sure if pro scouts would like that too much because uh, he'd be susceptible to some injuries probably to his shoulders with what he was doing, but definitely showed some toughness. Um, only really bad play I saw from him in that game was he made a bad throw across his body as he was rolling out, and it should have been picked off, but it wasn't. But So he got lucky there, but it was, it was a bad throw. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I thought about his Auburn game. So that's kind of what I saw from Aaron Murray on the couple of game tapes that I watched from him. And again, I kind of think he'll probably, if he's if his knee comes out healthy, I think he could potentially be picked anywhere in the, up through the second round. Uh, I don't really see him dropping much past the fourth, depending on his health. Um, I definitely think if the Cowboys, if he's still there in the fourth round, it should be something that they discuss. Um, I'm of the opinion that we need to be drafting young quarterbacks. I don't care that we've got Wheaton or what's going on with Orton. You know, if you've got a chance, you know, Wheaton's on a Wheaton's on a very cheap deal. 
you should try and see what else is there if the guy's there and available and obviously if they have his value at a spot where they think it's a valuable pick. Um, so that's what I thought of Murray. Uh, so going to the receivers now, uh, Jordan Matthews out of Vanderbilt. Um, not really a guy I'd known much of. I just kind of heard his name more around the senior bowl time when he was kind of making some splashes there. Uh, so I watched uh, a couple of games for him. <clears throat> uh, there wasn't a whole lot to choose from, so I chose his game against Old Miss and then against South Carolina for him. Um, one thing you notice right off the bat with this guy is he's got a very good combination of size and speed. Uh, he's almost he's kind of deceptively fast. I know he ran a good time at the combine. Um, when you see him in games, he's it's it takes you by surprise a little bit how quick he is once he gets the ball in his hands. And they used him on a lot of uh, some outside wide receiver screens and that type of thing where he was able to show off some speed and quickness, um, which was very impressive. Uh, so the game against Old Miss, and really this is in both games I watched, he has very good hands. Um, it's not going to be likely that this is any balls are going to hit hit him very accurately that he dropped them. Uh, he's got some very good hands. Um, notice he ran um, ran a big multitude of routes and patterns against Old Miss, so they don't. He wasn't a guy that even though he was their number one target, they didn't just run him on go patterns or you know just some quick outs or quick slants. Uh, like I say, they ran him on screens. They ran him on you know some deep uh, deep in cuts and some crossers and they ran him in a multitude of ways to get him open and take advantage of matchups lined him on the outside and on slot at times to again take advantage of matchups um, kinda suffered from not the greatest quarterback throws uh, some of the times um, the only really bad play that I saw from him was towards the end of the game and he did drop a very easy ball that hit him in the hands went through his hands and got up getting picked off to end the game um, as they were going down to try and I think win the game if I remember correctly so that was a a red mark on his performance in that game um, the other part that's a little bit shaky and it's a little bit hard to tell when you're watching some of these especially when you can't see the all 22 is how the wide receivers are going to block because um, even in the pros you see some guys who are blocking and it doesn't look like all the time they're that much into it and that's kind of what I felt like when I watched him when he was blocking on runs is he didn't seem to put his heart and soul into blocking. Um, kind of gave the appearance that maybe he thought that the play wasn't was already over or wasn't really coming his direction at the time. So he kind of blocked for a second and then let off. Um, so I felt like he could have done a little bit better there. But overall it was pretty solid. But he did show off size, speed, and good hands except for that last play. Uh, the game against South Carolina didn't really have a whole lot of opportunities. Um, terrible, terrible throws by the quarterback in that game that did not give him a chance really to make plays at all. Uh, but when the ball was in his radius, he was able to again show good hands, good ability to catch the ball and locate the ball. Um, you could tell that the defense was really keen on him at this point. Um, I'm not sure when this game was in the season, but I'm sure by that point coaches realized that he was their number one target for for Vanderbilt, so they pretty much keyed on him. So there's a lot of doubles and a lot of Especially on the wide receiver screens, they seem to be ready for those plays a lot, so he wasn't able to get any space. Um, he did do a better job blocking in this game. Um, not great, but he did do better. And I, I don't mean to think or to make it sound like I don't think he's going to be a good blocker, and that should just, just take you away from drafting him. Um, I definitely think it can be coached up because he's got the size, and I think he's got the strength, and definitely has the body type to gain some more strength to be a good blocker. Um, so that's all I saw from Jordan Matthews. Probably, I definitely think he goes at least in the second. Bare minimum, he'll be gone in the second round. Um, wouldn't be surprised. He could maybe slip into the bottom of the first. It's going to depend on how the draft falls, but the draft is so deep at wide receiver. I have a feeling that he's going to be in that bunch that's going to be draft some, drafted somewhere early to mid-second round. Um, definitely is one of the guys I'd suggest the Cowboys look at in the second round. If he's more highly rated than maybe somebody on defense, uh, depending on what we do in the first, obviously. But definitely I wouldn't be disappointed if we were able to get Jordan Matthews in the second. 
Similarly, the next guy that I looked at, Devontae Adams from Fresno State. Another guy I'd never really heard much about until draft season came around, started hearing about him at the, the Combine, the Senior Bowl, and then I started watching some of his tape. Uh, so, so, being at Fresno State, not a whole lot of high-level competition, at least compared to some of these other guys in the SEC. Um, not a whole lot of tapes available, so I watched his game against Nevada, and I did watch him against Southern Cal because that was at least some high-level competition for him there. Um, this is another guy, good size, deceptive speed, really good hands. Um, kind of like a suction cup if this gets anywhere near this guy. Um, so against Nevada, really good play where he caught a uh, touchdown on a fade route um, where he was able to really show you use, knowing that he knows how to use his size and his strength because he basically just out-muscled the, the DB for the ball. Looked a lot like, and I'm not comparing the players, but a lot of reminiscent of some of the touchdown catches over a DB that uh, Dez has made in some of his games. Um, another thing that he showed, good strength and good quickness and shiftiness to break out of initial tackles. Um, he kept, A lot of times he'd make a catch on the ball, the first guy wouldn't get him down, the guy who's covering him. He was able to escape those tackles, which uh, you know is obviously a key trait for a wide receiver. Uh, similarly to Matthews, they had him running a lot of multiple different routes, so he wasn't just a, you know, a one a one or two route player. He definitely showed that they were teaching him and learning. He was learning a lot of the different route trees, uh, which was good. Mainly they played him on the outside, didn't see him much doing any slot receiver work, which is a little bit surprising to me because of what a matchup he could bring. Um, but they may have wanted to focus more on putting him on the outside. Um, another guy, similarly to Matthews, really good acceleration once he got his hands on the ball. They also used him on some screens. Um, and he was able to get some pretty quick bursts in there. Uh, the only bad play was, despite how strong his hands were, he did make a catch where the DB was wrestling the ball away from him, and he basically just kind of ripped the ball right out of his hands um, for a for a fumble. So um, didn't see it wasn't a pattern with him as far as ball control, uh, but that was definitely the only kind of red mark for him in that game. But he did show good hands, good size, good strength. Uh, blocking, very similar to Matthews. Um, definitely shows you the ability that he could be a willing, he could be a good blocker and you definitely can teach him. Um, it was just kind of the whole, again, the idea of maybe he didn't think the play was coming his way, let up a little bit too soon. Um, so the game against USC, obviously this is going to be higher competition. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of good film on this one. Part of it was the quarterback for Fresno State, uh, which is Carr. Um, not a lot of good throws in this one. A lot of overthrows, short throws. So it didn't give him a whole lot of chances, but USC also did cover him pretty well. Um, he showed uh, good sideline awareness. He was able to make some catches and kind of walk the tightrope on the sideline to make sure he got his feet in bounds. Um, really did a good job running a double move, running a sluggo so the slant and go. He had the he had the the DB pretty much on his back. Would have been an easy touchdown, but Carr way overthrew him on the pass. Uh, but he sold the route very well and did a very good job on double move. Um, he showed some definitely some better blocking in this game, uh, particularly on a wide receiver screen. He was able to get his guy completely off the play. Um, he did get a touchdown off of another double move. And in this one, he didn't cause the DB, you know, to lose his position. The DB still maintained coverage pretty well. But in this one, he was able to move him just enough to get just that little bit of separation that with the ball getting there, he was able to get better position on the DB and outfight him for the ball. So that was really, that was a really good play by him. Uh, the only really bad play on this one, he had some miscommunication from what it looked like with the quarterback on a throw that was into the end zone and it ended up getting picked off. It looked like he was expecting a back shoulder fade. Carr threw a deep fade into the corner and the DB picked it off. So not sure if, whose fault that was on that one, but that was the only play where it didn't look like he got in good position um, for that. So um, again, not too much options and opportunities for him in that one, but he did again show his ability to get good catches 
This one showed his sideline awareness, and again, he was able to show some a little bit better blocking. And he was able to show, again, some more knowledge of running some good routes with the double moves. So this is another guy that, again, very similar to Matthews. I think he's definitely at the bare minimum a second-round pick. Could sneak into the bottom of the first, but again, I think he's probably going to be another one in that group that fits in that run of wide receivers that you always see happen around the second round of the draft. Um, this guy, I'm not ashamed to say he's kind of my pet cat from what I've watched, and I would be ecstatic if the Cowboys got him in the second. Um, so we'll end up seeing what happens there, whether or not they feel like they want to go wide receiver at any point. I have a sneaking suspicion that if they do go wide receiver, it's probably going to be fifth or sixth, similar to where we got Dwayne Harris a couple years ago. But we never know. If the value is there and other guys that they had value to pick before us, or before our pick, maybe we'll grab a wide receiver. Um, I don't think we could go wrong with either of these guys that I mentioned, Jordan Matthews or Devontae Adams. So uh, there you go. So I put a couple, some notes together on a few guys on offense. I'll go a little bit on the offensive line for my next vlog. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you, uh, what you guys see. You know, if you guys watch these guys on tape, again, it's draftbreakdown.com. Um, yeah, let's have a discussion on it. You know, I'd, obviously, I'd love to hear other fans' opinions on these guys and uh, kind of what you guys think. You know, because it's never wrong to have other opinions. You know, it just gives good discussion. So, yeah, let me know. Uh, feel free to leave a comment or send me a tweet. Um, Really quick, I did do another mock simulator this week, another one for four rounds. Uh, probably starting next week, I'll go a little bit more and do five rounds. Um, just to save on time, I'm not going to go through everybody that was available. I'll just kind of go through what my picks were and if any big names were available at the time. Um, and again, this is on the FanSpeak mock simulator, and I'll put the website uh, down. On, I'll link the website um, and just kind of bases off of player rankings and what they determine the team needs are and then the computer simulates all the picks before you and then you get to see who all is there so uh, for me in round one best player available for me was a tie between CJ Mosley from Alabama and Zach Martin the tackle out of Notre Dame um, it was a hard decision I ended up going with CJ Mosley just because of the health questions we have at linebacker because uh, it can never hurt to add another linebacker to the mix uh, especially if Lee continues to have injury problems, or if uh, Bruce Carter doesn't work out and doesn't bounce back. Uh, so um, second round, so Timmy Jernigan, the defensive tackle from Florida State, was still on the board. I don't think this happens in the draft. I think he goes in the first, but since he's there, obviously he's head and shoulders the best player available on the board, and because I didn't pick defensive line in the first round, I have no problem picking him in the second round. And obviously if he's to fall that far, that's a steal in my opinion. Uh, third round, not a whole lot of high-name guys available except for running backs. Trey Mason of Auburn and Carlos Hyde out of Ohio State. And then another inside linebacker and another defensive tackle, but I already took those with the first two picks. So I kind of went a little bit off the beaten path on this one because I've heard about this guy a little bit. I might decide to look at his tape for my stuff on the line. Uh, Billy Turner, the offensive tackle from North Dakota State, kind of a smaller school guy but highly rated to do very well against lower school competition. So I'm uh, not sure exactly about that one, but I decided to go take a chance on a smaller school guy that's highly rated. So again, I might look at his film for next week and see what I think. Uh, and then fourth round, this was another tough decision for me. Um, C. Strunk, the running back from Baylor, was there. Ferguson, defensive tackle from LSU, another running back. And then McCarron, the quarterback out of Alabama, was there along with the wide receiver, Huff out of Oregon. Um, and he, I almost picked Huff out of Oregon just because we hadn't gotten a receiver at this point. But Will Sutton, the defensive tackle from Arizona State, was still there. And I felt like for the value I was getting in the fourth round with him on the board, I decided to pick him up. Um, living in Arizona, I've seen him play. He was not as good this last year, but he's dropped weight. And when he was playing at the weight he's at now, Two years ago, he was an absolute monster in the middle. And even with the addition of Henry Melton, we don't know what Henry Melton's going to do. We don't know what the Cowboys are going to do after this year with the one-year deal and a three-year option. So if you've got that opportunity to get another three technique in there who could, at the very minimum, be a rotational guy 
and has a chance to be somebody who can be disruptive, I think you take the chance on that. And then the fourth round, I think that's a round where you can afford to take that kind of a chance. So that's all I did for this one in the mock simulator. So again, round one, Mosley, the linebacker from Alabama. Round two, Jernigan, defensive tackle from Florida State. Round three, Billy Turner, tackle from North Dakota State. And round four, Will Sutton, the D tackle out of Arizona State. Um, so again, leave any comments, let me know what you think. Run your own simulators. Um, you know, go ahead and send them to me in a tweet or anything, or leave it in a comment. Uh, so that'll do it for this week. Uh, again, check out the video. Um, click on the playlist if you want to see my other vlogs. Uh, leave any comments, like, subscribe so you can see when I'm going to have another vlog coming out. And uh, feel free to tweet me uh, if you want to talk uh, Cowboys, talk draft, anything like that. So have a good night and go Cowboys.